probably like first real match. Yeah. I mean, I, really, I did a lot of practice matches before I actually had my first real one. Yeah, yeah, your first real match. Probably like eight months. Okay, okay, okay. But I mean, it's so, not big time. That's fine. It's that's fine. You, but, you start off small and then you yeah. work up. High school is like very much all about getting you out there and getting you working. But I mean, I'm not dealing with life and well, kind of dealing with life and death. I guess like if you if you screw up, I could break someone's neck. Okay, but 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 just hear me out, Andy. Right? So so eight months before you got in front of a crowd. And performed in the ring with another opponent. And you guys are totally just trying to keep one another safe. You yeah. know, but you're trying to make it look like utter violence. All right. But eight yeah. months to do that. All right. Most cops have maybe a month and a half of fucking training. Oh, oh my God. What? Serious? Okay. So, so just let that run through your head. Yeah, okay. man. All right. The, the, in eight months, it took eight months before they were willing to go. Okay, you can get in front of a crowd now. Because if you're doing practice matches, it's just you all back there. And if something starts to go wrong, there's people there instantly help. Blah blah blah. It, dude, if you're in a fucking match match and something goes wrong, oh shit. Right. Eight yeah. months, bro. Eight months to yeah. be a fucking cop with a gun and a badge and all this goddamn authority. It's typically never more than two. You spent I didn't four... know it was that little. Hmm? I didn't know it was that little. Yeah, dude, you don't you don't have to train long to be a fucking cop. Oh wow. Police dogs get way more training than actual fucking police. That's gotta be scary for the cops themselves. What? Like two, two months and thrown in? Like I'd be shit scared. That's my point, man. You're taking and and just to to create a system that works to keep people in line ostensibly, you're pushing yeah. people through at a quicker rate than is really fucking necessary in any capacity. Because there's yeah. no reason in hell to do that job. You should have that little of training. I mean, you yeah, are, no. yeah. It should be a whole school. Like, you should have to go to like university or something. That's like what college. I'm saying. Like a, like a police. Like, I know they have police colleges. It must. But, but man, ain't you seen Police Academy? That shit was like two months. <laughs> Those are good movies, by the way. I mean, eh, I, up to a certain degree. I think there's a certain one, a point where it's just like, mm-hmm, it's got moments, right? I was well, yeah, like, it's got some good moments. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, I can watch Tyler all day. God, his name escapes me right now. Um, the bad guy in the second one. Uh, is that Bobcat Goldthwait? Bobcat, yeah. Okay, Bobcat. Yeah. Bobcat. <laughs> I love anything with him in it. It's hilarious. Uh, he, he that takes- character is amazing. I guess yeah. it was more than that movie. Like he was playing, he was kind of playing that character all over the place. It wasn't just huh. in Police Academy. Have you have you uh have you ever heard his juggalo story? No, but that sounds choice. Okay, look, <laughs> Bobcat was... Goldthwait has a juggalo story. Oh my god, dude! I'm gonna have to thank you to Nick Merkovich, right, real quickly for sending me that. And again, y'all need to go check out Dead Romans and his past quests. Every time he's been on, is a pleasure. Um, uh, I'll send it to you after the show, Andy. <laughs> And for everyone out there listening, I will put a link in the descriptions because it had me fucking rolling because it's a story about Bobcat going to the gathering. <laughs> Pretty good. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's like, salt. how old would he have been when he went? He would have been older. Um. Well, this was when Robin Williams was, a lot, was alive. Because Robin Williams is the host of this. It's him, Bobcat, and someone yeah, else whose name is... I mean, Bob, Bobcat's what? Late 50s? 60s? I mean, I would say he's probably in his upper 50s now. For sure. Definitely. You know? So, I mean, he was... Sure. I'm going to say I'm gonna say it was in, when he was in his late 40s. I don't know. Look, I'll put a link in the description in this so y'all can check that out, too. If you want to hear a really funny-ass story from Bobcat... 
Uh, I'll put the link up that Nick sent over to me so y'all can hear that because it is some of the funniest. I like if I ever achieve a moment that is that long running and funny on this show, I'll be so goddamn happy because it is like six or seven minutes of just oh my god, I need to stop laughing so I can hear the rest of this shit. <laughs> All right now to flip that back, you got any? So you've uh, you've been wrestling in ISW a while. What's the craziest story you got from there, man? Because I assume it's a little nuttier than on the comic book side of things. In wrestling? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's wild>. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the deal. It's weird. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 again, it's the same thing. Um, I think, like, the really wild heyday of, like, even my fed was probably, you know, like in the early 2000s. You know what I mean? Because my Fed um, had Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn. Real quick. Uh, no, hey, uh, hey, 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 hey. No. They had Kevin Steen and yeah, El sorry, Generico. Kevin, and El Generico, El Gen he had to go to the orphanage. Had, yeah. It would have had um, um, <clears throat> big, big Magic Matt Lee. It was Daddy Magic. He was my trainer for for uh, I think almost two years, year and a half, two years. I had Big Magic, and Big Magic was one of my all time favorite heel wrestlers ever. And he has not been let off the chain yet. But like, wow, when he had he had like bodyguards up here. He had these two bodyguards, and he was the ultimate heel like so funny and i, I got in a bunch of matches with him. my own my my biggest title i ever won was off him hmm. yeah and he like oh, we were at a festival a heavy metal festival and i'm in the main event and he's like he's like all day just like i'm, I'm trying i'm like hey what are we doing like he was my teacher at the time i'm like what what are we doing i'm real nervous you know it's my first championship He's saying nothing because he knows I, I suck ass at improv, especially then. I'm a lot better at it now, but I'm a planner. I like to plan. I have like eight scenarios in my head for the match before I go to the show. Then I get there with the guy and we start jamming. And I kind of already have the match in my head eight different ways. But it's planned. But when a guy shows up and he's like, whatever, we'll just go out there. I'm like, Ooh. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> We're just going to go? Um, uh, all right. He's like, yeah, just call it. Now, the funny thing about Big Magic is I don't know what it is, but like when I'm in the ring with Big Magic, he's like Johnny Mumbles. I can't hear a goddamn word he's saying. <laughs> like, go run by me to give me something, and he'll just be like, blah, 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 blah. and I'll be like, what? <laughs> and you want to improv the whole thing? I can't hear a goddamn word. He's like, Oh, your mask is too thick. Meanwhile, I go out there with Uno. So Uno is another guy that was part of our thing. Uno and, and Stu. And I go with Uno, uh, like, clear as a bell. I don't know what it is. Big magic. Can't understand him in the ring. But my favorite all-time heel of any wrestler that I've seen in Quebec, he was, like, the best. Even as a fan, like, when I was a fan, before I started wrestling, when I would go, just watching Big Magic get out there and just be the biggest bully I've ever seen in my life. Just like classic 80s bully, like as hard as it gets. Like, like MJF came out and he was like, I'm a bully. But like, I've been watching Big Magic do it for like a decade. Like, and in my opinion, a lot better. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big Magic was on fire on fire as a heel and he has not been let off the chain in AEW in my opinion oh he went to NXT and he like I love Jeff Parker amazing wrestler too but they immediately went as a tag team and I was like what's happening because like if you ever experienced an IWS show or an indie show in in Quebec or Ontario and you saw Big Magic it's like you kind of just want Big Magic <laughs> you want Big Magic to get out there and do his business because it's amazing so good and then the kind of hottest guy in in sort of the U.S. 
wrestling scene right now is Speedball Mike Bailey, and he's my newest teacher. So we were, we worked together all COVID once a week. We were in the same bubble. So I used to have a match against Speedball Mike Bailey every week. So the reason he's so good right now is because he was practicing his ass off by kicking me in the face for years before he got, he got in there. I got kicked in the face more times by Speedball Mike Bailey than, well, I mean, who kicks you in the face, right? So I, I literally, as a comic artist turned wrestler, uh, spent two years or three years getting kicked in the face every Wednesday multiple times by Speedball Mike Bailey. <laughs> it's awesome. So funny. That, that's... All right, and I well, got so good. I got so much better because of him. I got really good because of him. I, it's it's a, well, let's let's think. Oh, uh, and you have to have one of the most interesting combinations I think of any guest as far as just to be a wrestler and to be a comic book writer. It's it's very very intriguing. But I'm curious. There's obviously a lot of differences. You know, you're not going to be talking to your artist at any point and him drop kick you or you power bomb him. I don't have an artist. I do all my own art. You know, oh, well, whatever. Fine. Fair yeah, yeah. <laughs> I drop kick myself when I do a bad drawing. <laughs> I want a video of that. Or there's, or, or yeah, no, I want video proof. This arm sucks. If you come watch me wrestle, I literally. Like when I come in the ring and I get up in the corner, my thing is I punch myself in the head like four or five times. Oh, and it, well, like, I, it like gets me, it, it wakes me up, it gets me like toughened up. I get that, but I want to see you drop kick yourself because I just don't think it's possible. I, I'll, I'll figure that. I bet you Speedball Mike Bailey can drop kick himself. So I'll, I'll call Speedball and be like, hey man, I got to drop kick myself how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Like, can you teach me how to drop kick myself? The closest I can think of that is to when Rob Van Dam would kick himself in the head on accident. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. that's that's the only thing I can think of as far as somebody being able to put their foot I to the face. I have a wrestling ring. story. My very first match ever, I came out as the animal. I was on a chain. Like, they used to bring me out on a chain. And I had a Canadian flag for some reason. And I got up in the corner post. I'm waving the flag around, and the flag was the flag I got from Darwin Cook's like funeral. It was like the one on his coffin or whatever, for he, um, or it was used like in a whatever. It was I got it from his funeral. It had doweling on it. You like you know the little ropes with the little piece of wood on it. Yeah, like, there's like a little piece of doweling on it. I was waving that thing around. I clocked myself in the eye. Gave myself a black eye, cut my eye open, and just blood was pouring down. Match hadn't even started. My first match ever. Kentucky Fried Chicken match. I beat up a guy with a with a with a twenty piece. <laughs> I don't even I don't even know what to say about that. Like, I, I blood beat pouring out of my face that I that I did to myself before I even <laughs> before the bell even started. He's such an idiot. <laughs> that's, that's pretty fucking hardcore, I'll say. Like that's like, uh, you know. Oh man, this one time I broke both my ankles. I was on the top rope. I was on the top rope at one at, at Metropolis, which is our biggest venue, I think. I think you could fit two, three thousand people there, maybe four thousand people. It's huge. And uh, there's this big guy in Montreal named uh, uh, Max Testosterone, Max Lemire, big guy, three hundred fifty pound power lifter. Anyway, uh, he got hurt, so he wasn't selling real well for a while there. And uh, I was facing my other trainer, Andrew Shane Hawk. Uh, Shane Hawk was in Shikara, awesome wrestler, one of my best buddies. Does a lot of comic book writing for me. Like we worked together on all the WWE comics, um, all the shorts that I did. I had him write it just because his knowledge of wrestling was amazing. And um, we had a match against each other. And uh, we were beating the crap out of each other. And I was on the top rope. And Big Max was on the outside causing trouble, trying to get me to fall off the top. And I went from the top out to give him, like, a like a cane clothesline. And when I hit him, it was like hitting a brick wall. He didn't move. So, all like, in wrestling, like, if I jump at you, 
You're supposed to catch me but fall. Yeah. It takes the energy out of out of the fall. Yeah. You almost like push off the guy a little, right? So you don't get hurt. No one gets hurt. Yeah. I just roll back on my back. The guy kind of like lands on me, but you don't get hurt. Anyway, he didn't move. So when I hit him, both both feet drove right into the floor, 13 feet down or 14 feet down. And both ankles, when they smacked into the ground, just. And the next day I had to fly to Avilas in Spain for a Comic-Con. <laughs> so I did the rest of the match, but I knew something was weird. Like I was like, I was in pain. I wasn't my character per se. Another botch happened where Andrew tried to do a swanton bomb to the outside and landed on his back. It was really bad. So both of us were kind of like messed up. So the match was kind of like weird at the end. Um, and then the next day, I'm in the airport and like just using my trolley because both my ankles had swollen up like basketballs. It was brutal. And like, you know, airport, airport staff's like, sir, would you like a wheelchair? I'm like, get out of here. I don't need your wheelchair. <laughs> Meanwhile, the, the international terminal in Montreal is so far that, that after they left, I was like, oh, shit, I messed that up. I should have got that wheelchair. <laughs> like, it's, really, it's really bad. But then you go to Spain, and all they do is drink beer. So you go to the con, and you sit in front in a cafe, and there's a lineup of people that have bought your book. You sign it, and then do them a drawing, and they have a beer. They have a beer for themselves and a beer for you, for every drawing you do. So I think I drank 20 beers a day for like four days when I was in Avilas just drawing. And by beer eight, I'm amazing. You're like, amazing. Get me a sketch on beer eight, you're going to get gold. Get me to do a sketch on beer 12, garbage. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> so amazing. for anybody out there that's seeing you at the, uh, at the con, they need to catch you between beer eight and 11. <laughs> You never drink at a con. It's only because it was Spain. I don't know. They just have a, a different way that they do it over there. So you, you imagine when a happy person at, a, at a, an American con bringing you a beer every time they come to your table? And then they have one too, and it's rude if you don't drink with them? That would be wild. That would be very, very interesting. But I think maybe more people might get stabbed with pensils and pens and such if Cons were working okay. like that in America. Let's be yeah, probably. real honest. I mean, people are like apparently stalking Brian K. Vaughn to the point where that's happening. And God knows somebody would get into an argument of who would win a fight or what's the best comic book film, which I think it's you funny. Have a lot of that. Yeah, you don't have a lot of the fights anymore. There's no more fights. It's all pretty tame. Good, man. I say we like. there's enough out there. We can all enjoy it respectively. And not yeah. have to sit on what anybody else is enjoying. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's important in society for us to move forward as a whole. You know, that way we can hopefully reach Star Trek and not Mother Trucker or Star Wars or some shit. You know, <laughs> I'm not I'm not trying to live in the motherfucking Mother Trucker universe, man. I'm really not. But on the note of movies, you just think like most comic book movies just don't do the comic justice? No. 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 But then you list Thor Ragnarok hey, as your favorite comic maybe, film. Maybe, maybe Blade One. I really like Blade One. It's, it's pretty badass. It's funny, dude. I got a phone, but you know the disc he threw at the first scene. I mean, yeah, throws, throws. yeah. I've got the. I'm and back here. I could grab it. I'm not going to go back to a past episode. I've grabbed it enough and shown it off. But like from Wizard World Chicago. When they initially were doing Blade, I've got that phone Blade thing still. And I don't know how, especially with the past year of my life, that it is still in one piece and, like, whole and nice. It fucking amazes me. Shout out to whoever produced those sons of bitches because it's went through some shit in the past year of my life. But it is still in pristine condition. Uh, but, yeah, I do think Blade is one of the ones. But you don't think Thor Ragnarok did then? You yeah, I like Thor Ragnarok a lot. It's one of my favorites. It's the most Kirby. I know a lot of like the the sort of like right wing dudes trash Ragnarok, but I'm like, come on! Have you ever read a, a like a like a what is it? What is it like a Walt Simonson like Thor? Or you read like 
any Kirby that had Thor. You're telling me you don't like Ragnarok? Like, even stylistically, it looks like a Kirby comic. Thor's my favorite Marvel character. And granted, there was stuff in Love and Thunder that was just stupid. Like, sure. You know. But Ragnarok, that's my, I think it's my favorite Marvel movie. That, that Thor was gonna... like a ridiculous Kirby fan, and it felt the most like Kirby. So when I'm... a lot of people say, oh, they're so goofy, I was like, well, look at the two before that were like radically serious. Like, were they any good? No. Thor is meant to be like, here's something for you. Did you ever watch the animated show Batman Brave and the Bull? It was bit. after Batman the Animated Series. Yeah, like a couple anyway, episodes, but not Whoever yeah, was not writing really. that show wrote the greatest Aquaman ever. Aquaman was exactly like Al Bundy. He was always like, he was over the hill. He was married. He drove a Winnebago. He was always talking about, Aquaman was always talking about like these amazing past adventures he'd go on. And Batman would be like, oh, just shut up. I'm like, that's Thor. Thor's like, like the egotistical kind of like football guy that had these amazing adventures, but he's like, he's not meant to be Batman, right? Thor has fun, man. Very true, very true. I do, I will say, man, I don't, I didn't care for love and thunder. Me I, either. I really didn't, but the part with kids, I was just like, okay, this is stupid. Also, I also don't particularly care for your answer for least favorite comic book character now. Andy, what kind of shit is that? What did you say? I said your least favorite comic book character now. What kind of shit is that? How are you going to say my boy Deadpool? Have we talked about this before? Um, did I you have, I, I don't believe I so. Because when Deadpool came out, I was real sick of the smart Alec comic character. I was just done with it. You know, the I'm witty and I'm gonna throw it. Oh, look how smart I am! Blah blah blah. I was just like, Ugh. but I think it was just like when it happened. You know what I mean? Like, cause Deadpool two is a good movie. I like that movie. Awesome. Baby legs had me crying. Baby leg scene had me in tears. I was crying in that part of the movie, like crying, Ro like rewind. I'm watching Baby Legs again. <laughs> it's the funniest crap I've ever seen. So I'm I'm not as my hatred of Deadpool is not as big as it used to be. It's a little bit. So no, Deadpool is not my my least favorite comic character by far. No way. Um, That's what you answered. Is that what I said? Did I say Deadpool? Y'all look. Hopefully his his uh. His questionnaire is fully up on the Patreon, and you can go check it out to confirm that that's what he answered. It is Deadpool. I, I know I, I should actually, hopefully by the time this quest drops, you've already been able to see Andy's questionnaire over on the Patreon. I'm trying I think, to I think, hey, today. You know what? I think, I think you just caught me on a bad day that day. Well, let's flip to this then, because we just discussed. Uh, now it's Harley Quinn. Way more acceptable answer because yeah, I think not it's Harley Quinn. I don't like Harley Quinn. I'm so sick of her. <laughs> Do you think that's an oversaturation thing? Yeah, and I mean she's she's meant to be DC's Deadpool. <laughs> <laughs> Which, if you really think about it, is funny because Marvel's Deadpool or Marvel is just their. Uh, Marvel or yeah, it's, uh, DC's Deathstroke is Marvel's Deadpool. Yeah, and, exactly. And then, they, and then they went and made and they and I think that's something that they kind of missed because Marvel took Deathstroke and they really tweaked it and came out with Deadpool, who is obviously a way more successful and well-known character, especially now. I don't care that Will Smith played Deathstroke. He's still or no, he played Deadshot. My bad. Too many damn. They haven't brought Deathstroke out in the live action except in Arrow. Um, or no, they did. He well, he did have a moment, didn't he? In something, but it never played oh, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I would I, say right now, Harley Quinn. I don't think she's ever. I mean, the act like Margot Robbie looks like a cool Harley Quinn, 
Has she ever been in a, like a, a good movie where it was like about her? No. Um, I mean, Suicide Squad two was kind of took me by surprise because Suicide Squad one I think is the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. Like it's in my worst film ever. Suicide have you Squad. ever seen? Have you ever seen a Serbian Justice, film? Worst movies of all time. Have you ever seen a Serbian film? Uh, no, I refuse to watch that, and I'll tell you why. I tell you why. I don't watch kid killing movies. I don't watch baby rape movies. I have a, I have a baby, and I don't pop for child killing in movies at all anymore. Now that I've had a kid, like right after I had my kid, that movie oh. with uh, uh, Jennifer Lawrence came out, Mother, where they like take her baby and like a bunch of dudes eat it or something, and I was like, oh fuck off, like get out of here. I have no time for that cheap heat. If your movie okay. opens with a kid being killed, I'm done. I just turn it off. Okay. Right. Or 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 pets. Or pets. So you're not a John Wick guy? Huh? You're not a John Wick guy? I love John Wick. Well that was I had, I had a, his dog died. That, that was the was first hard, thing though. that happens. That was a hard watch. But justified. Like they kill his dog, but like on now. All right, oh, real quick. Girl, I'm, oh. I'm a widow maker now. <laughs> I just got to say, on the note of a Serbian film, I used to run a radio where we did a horror movie review show, and there were three of us, and we all picked a film. And I, I would have turned that film off had I not had to review it. I really would have turned that shit off. I so wanted. I've never more in my Is life. It huh? Is it Lars von Trier? Is what? Is it Lars von Trier? I don't know. As far as the actress, no, the, yeah, no, the director. I don't know. I'm pretty sure the director ended up like almost getting indicted because he told the actors to go into hiding after the film was initially released. Yeah, that's what the guy did for and, Cannibal Holocaust back in the day. I think yeah. he did. Do, he almost did do prison time. That was a hardcore movie, Cannibal Holocaust. Like, I could not see the special effects. And I mean, I'm not a big fan of that, really, either. Like, I've watched Santa Call of Holocaust. It's hardcore, most hardcore thing I've ever had to sit through. Yeah, like, well, don't don't watch don't watch a Persian film I, or, or a Serbian I'm film. I'm not going to watch that movie. Yeah, I, I, would never, that. I would I never. Know. If you want to check out something cool Serbian, go check out uh, Vladimir's art, who's been on the past show. He's actually from Serbia. But don't don't watch the Serbian film, dude. It's terrible. But what do you think is Who's the from Serbia? Huh? Who's from Serbia? Comic artist? Vladimir. He's a colorist. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Vladimir. Uh, Isad Ribic's from, I think, is he Croatian or Serbian? Huh? Isad Ribic. I don't he's, know, man. Don't he's be. either Croatian or Serbian, I thought. I only know Vlad because he's been on the show several times. <laughs> oh, okay. I know Isad's from out there and he was in the army. I cannot. I cannot. I can't probably tell you where all the guests are from at this point. And you don't just I know I know Vlad's from Serbia because I was like I, the second he said that I was like, Have you seen a Serbian film? He's like, Man, I don't want to talk about it. And I was just, uh, <laughs> Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I was like, I get it, I get it. But back yeah. to another thing. Back to another note, man. I wanna know. How did you go from the Superman being your least to most favorite character. I think that's an interesting transition. Oh, man. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that. Superman, as I was, as a kid, I hated Superman the most. Because he was like... Just like... There's just nothing there. He's like indestructible. Like, what a stupid idea. This character sucks. Like, he just walks in a room. He's got, he's got it covered. Not very interesting. But, I mean, I'm a... You know, I was born in 78... Right. When I was a teenager, it was all about the crow. Don't call Steve Austin, the anti-hero, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's my era. Like that whole 80s action, 90s action. You know, that's my era. And sort of like the badass was what I liked. And I always thought that Superman was just this goof, like stupid. Look at his costume. It's dumb. And then when I got older... And every character became Batman. Like, I think in DC 52, just every comic felt like Batman. The Flash. Uh, what? What happened to Flash? His parents were killed. 
you know, uh, Aquaman, oh, my parents were killed, my girlfriend's killed. All, all our, it was the same story for every comic, and they were all dark. And I was just like, I, I just want some Superman. And then when I started getting into Superman, I realized he's kind of the most interesting character. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a story and spill some tea. Um, Scott Snyder was coming off Batman, and he was about to do Superman. And I was at a convention talking to him, and I was like, Superman has become my favorite character. And he's like, get out. I was like, yeah. I find Batman boring now just because, like, everyone's done him a million times. There's a million stories. There's, like, 50 Batman titles. Like, I don't care about Batman anymore. Like, at all. I'm done. So it's like Star Wars. I don't care anymore. It's over. Sorry. You tried for 25 years. I don't care. I don't care <laughs> about any Star Wars ever again. Uh, nothing you can do will make me care. And, like, I mean, I grew up with those movies. Like, I think I've seen Star Wars one a thousand times. But I said, I said, Scott, what makes Superman interesting, and the only thing that makes him interesting, is that he's Clark Kent. And when he's Clark Kent, he's, like, awkward. He has no idea how to get the girl. He's, he's you know, kind of a gomer, right? He's having a tough time holding down that job as the city's crumbling around him and trying to, like, keep it a secret. And that's how we all feel. We all feel like Clark Kent. We all feel like we're trying to be humans, but, like, we're having real, like, this is hard. We're having a real hard time being human. And that is what makes Superman crazy interesting, is it's a, it's a guy trying with all the, I got all the power in the world, but my core moral values from Ma and Pa Kent out there are so strong that I'm not going to, I have to, you know, I'm a good guy. So I am really going to try <laughs> to be like a normal human. He just sucks at it. <laughs> and it's, it's awesome. And that's why you can't touch Christopher Reeve. I, and don't get me wrong, like, uh, uh, what's his name? Henry Cavill, I love him. I love Cavill. I don't care who, like, I don't care that he's like, you know, people on the far right love Cavill. How do you not love Cavill? He's amazing. He's awesome. But he's not Christopher Reeve as Superman. He was a good Superman, but as Clark Kent, and I don't think he ever got any decent Clark Kent. So when I was getting back to that story about Scott Snyder, I was telling him exactly what I told you. Also very passionate like that. And he was like, nah, I'm just going to have him fighting some monsters. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> like, no one cares about Clark Kent. And I was like, it's the only thing that makes this whole thing interesting. The, I, I swear this is two shows recently that have made me be like, I want to read some more Superman. and I've never been a fan of Superman in my life. And now I'm like, hmm, I think I need to go pick up a couple of Superman graphics. And Dave from Comic Book, he's going to look at me and be like, you sure you want this? I'm going to be like, yeah, dude, just shut up. <laughs> I like Tim Sale's Superman for all seasons. I think it's my favorite Tim Sale stuff. That was really good. It feels like a weird, like, Oh, what's that guy's name? The guy that did all like the old '50s Americana paintings. Oh, what's his name? Norman Rockwell. Feels like some sort of weird Norman Rockwell painting, as a Superman story. You know, very accessible. Um, I think it's his strongest work. You know, I, I dug that story. Uh, yeah. my sort of like mentor in comics was like Stuart and Catherine Eminen, and when I met Stuart when I was in college. It was my first year in art college. Stuart moved to the town I was in in Ontario. And him and his wife, Catherine, who was a, you know, wrote Marvel Comics, um, they bought this giant house. And I used to go over there and, and, you know, watch him work on Superman's Secret Identity. And, like, in this gorgeous, like, attic studio. And I just became mesmerized. And, I mean, I was, I'm one of those kids that wanted to be a comic artist from the time I was six, like five or six. I knew what I wanted to be my whole life. Like, you could have asked me, Anytime from six on, what are you going to do? I'm going to be a comic artist. Never changed or wavered or faltered. 
clear trajectory. That's all I wanted to do. Um, so when I, when I finally got to meet him and hang out with him, it was like a big thing. And he was working on a really cool Superman story. And, uh, I still hated Superman then, but I started changing my mind over the years. And now I, I'm kind of like, do we need any more Batman? What's left? <laughs> well, what made you decide, man, from going into comics to, to add the wrestling? Because I feel like, uh, look, entertainment as a whole, and I say this as, as a hip-hop artist doing the podcast, running the radio, everything I've done, can be way more cutthroat than I think most people would perceive. Um, hmm? Oh, hip-hop? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's it. Hip hop's uh, cut through the shit, but and I know I've I've heard a number of stories from the wrestling community that seem to coincide with it can be very very cutthroat at times. I will say, I will say this: wrestling can be cutthroat for sure. Wrestling is not even a third as cutthroat as comics. Comics is way worse. Like, far, 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 far worse. Way worse. There's, if you think, if you, like, there's no sense of, there's very little sense of community in comics. And if you feel like there is, in the drop of a dime, it disappears. I don't think I ever had a single friend I made in comics that the second they got into Marvel talk to me during their Marvel years. And then when the Marvel thing kind of faded out, then they, we were friends again. Every single time. Every single time. But um, specifically when they went to Marvel? Oh, yeah, mostly, yeah, Marvel. DC was always cooler. You know, the editors, like the whole scene at DC, they were always cooler. More accessible. So whenever you were like networking or whatever, DC was always like way easier and cooler to like hang with and chat with. But Marvel was, I still haven't really cracked Marvel. Yo, this is Mark McKenna here. Check me out at www.markmckennaart.com. This is Alex Segura, author of Secret Identity. My name is Sander Sarate. This is Laverne Kinjerski. This is John Ward, creator of Scratcher and a whole bunch of other crap. It's Jason Copeland. Uh, Artist and writer of Full Tilt. You are listening to The Questionnaire. Say that again. You got to check out The Questionnaire. He's been super fun and entertaining, honestly. He's like, <laughs> just like hanging out with friends and chilling. It's, it's, it's cool, man. I love it. It's, it's nice. You need to check out The Questionnaire. I mean, you do. Have a file format you want, or even a carrier pigeon. With new episodes every week. Jeez, I better write that shit down. I love y'all, and it's a hell of a quest.